and the morning talk. I'd like to thank President Dutchland for inviting me and giving the opportunity to come here and make a presentation on the work which uh, we are doing in India to understand how human employees can be changed. Uh, uh, in Himalaya, just for some of you who may not be clearly aware because some of the terms that we use it subsequently uh, will be related to the numerous uh, um, aspects. Some of the, uh, uh, particularly the uh, Western Himalaya, which we normally uh, use the term which involves the mountain ranges like Karakoram and Great Himalayan mountain range and the Sivalik mountain range. In the central region, which is, includes the, the basins such as Ganges, we call the central Himalaya and Brahmaputra basin, where I shall be talking about the region which we consider is the eastern Himalaya. There are, there are some of the locations in the Himalaya has very fascinating um, uh, landscapes uh, land and this is one of the glaciers which is the Samudra Tapu glacier located into the Himalaya. So they have very clear, uh, uh, very clear numerous glacier features can be seen on the, on the glacier as well as uh, India has a major uh, remote sensing program and uh, we have a numerous remote sensing satellite. So some of these features can be clearly identified on the satellite images and because of that a major program is undertaken uh, by the government of India to understand how Himalayan triosphere is changing. And uh, to do that, one of the key things is first to understand how much is the area that extends into the Himalaya. There are a lot of controversies related to that and how it is changing. So I shall be talking about some of the earliest work which was done in India by me in where we have approximately 23 to 26,000 square kilometers area is mapped into the Himalaya, uh, Indian Himalaya. There are of course the numerous other uh, regions in Nepal and uh, Tibet which will have addition to this. But this I am talking in terms of the Indian Himalaya. And most of the glacier uh, in uh, Himalayan regions are melting and the rate of melting is very from glacier to glacier. So, uh, one of the fastest retreating glacier, which is the Parvati glacier, which is retreating at the rate of 50 meters per year, and some of the glaciers are retreating in a very small rate. However, there are numerous reasons. There is a detailed investigation is carried out on these glaciers to understand why these glaciers are retreating. And if you look into the fastest retreating glacier, you can see entire glacier is located in very low altitude zone. As of now, the snow line at the end of summer in Himalaya is around 5,300 meters and you can see around 5,300 meters, almost 95% glacier is located. And because of that, there is a bit, very little formation of new ice on the glacier and such glaciers are retreating very fast rate. In, in addition to that, we can also understand how much overall changes into the Himalayan triosphere is taking place. So there is a major program which is undertaken by Indian Space Research Organization to understand these changes and there are numerous bases where detailed investigations were covered up. They are well distributed. They are distributed uh, into the western Himalaya. Uh, many, uh, many are located in central Himalaya in Ganges Basin and one is located in Tista Basin which is in Brahmaputra River Basin. So this investigation suggests that overall glaciers are significantly retreating, not only the work which we did, but additional work which we did into the uh, different other scientists into the Himalaya clearly suggests that Himalayan glaciers are retreating and the rate of retreat is uh, varying from 15% uh, uh, over a period of last 40 years. Uh, and uh, you can see on this investigation almost uh, 10,000 square kilometer area is a, is, a, is a map and approximately we have 34 or 36,000 square kilometer area into the Himalaya uh, that includes the Nepal and Bhutan and out of that almost 10,000 square kilometer area is map, already mapped to understand the retreat of glacier and it suggests that almost all glaciers except some glaciers in Karakoram are retreating. In addition to that, there are numerous investigations. I also recently suggested that uh, some glaciers are stable and they are not retreating. However, there is a new uh, observation which clearly suggests that fundamentally there are different reasons for that. You can see here that the glaciers 
terminus is a significant tree covered by debris and because of that the debris cover is not responding to the climate change and it is not retreating but the significant main thing is the increase in higher reaches and one glacier which was earlier there now split into the different glacier. So this is one glacier which was in 1962 and now split into the four different glaciers and suggesting the fragmentation or breaking down of the glacier system is taking place. Another key observation, if glaciers are significantly covered by debris and then there is a significant change in the slope takes place in lower reaches and you can see here in 1990 there were very small uh, lakes which were started to fall onto the uh, glacier in Sikkim Himalaya which is eastern Himalaya and subsequently in 1997 the significant increase has taken place 2004 and by 2010 entire region is taken over by major more entire and there are this phenomena is now is observed on a numerous glacier into the eastern Himalaya that even if glaciers are covered by debris their recovery is significantly affected because of the formation of lakes on, its, on the glacier. Uh, in addition to that, it is also important to understand what is the loss in glacier mass. We do not have a continuous record of, uh, record of um, uh, mass balance for any glacier for the last 30, 40 years. But what I try to do is, wherever there is a data available for 10 years or 15 years, I have used my own model to understand what is the total loss in glacier. India, you can see here that two fundamental aspects have become very clear that the mean loss which is in decade between 1978 to 88 was around minus 0.4 meter has now simply doubled and for a decade between 1998 and 2008 it has become almost minus 1 meter. So now we are losing glacial ice into the Himalaya as an approximately 1 meter per year. There is a significant loss. But considering that we, um, the take of Himalayan glaciers are not very large compared to what you have in Iceland and other, other places because, uh, uh, and you can see that why this loss is coming because there's a, there's a major change in the snow line onto the glacier has taken place. And you can see the early part of 70, the snow line on Himalaya at around 4,900, uh, in between 4,900 and 4,000, uh, 5,000 meters has significantly shifted up to the 5,300 meters. And you can only see for one year, it has significantly come down, uh, essentially because that there was very heavy snowfall into the Himalaya and it was a late snowfall. Snowfall has taken place in the month of uh, April and because of that snow line is uh, coming down and you can really understand what is the distribution of snow cover. These are the large number of glaciers where I have plotted here the distribution of snow cover and you can see very clearly as there is a change in EGLA uh, is taking place uh, from 5,000 meters to 5,300 meters, a significant proportion of accumulation area is converted into the accumulation area and reducing the uh, mass balance of the glacier. In addition to that, we have also looked into the, what will really happen if there is a 2 degree rise temperature and a simpler, uh, we can apply the simple model which is based upon ELA and you can see here, if temperature rises by 2 degrees Celsius from present, the negative mass balance will increase by factor of 55. That means there is a tremendous acceleration of a negative mass balance will take place even if there is a small increase in 2 degrees Celsius temperature. In addition to that, we have also looked into the uh, how seasonal snow cover is changing into the Himalaya and you can realize there is no uh, definite pattern in what is happening. It is happening in, if you really look into the long term changes, that means from um, uh, long term changes, then you can see from a uh, uh, between 1990 and 2001, the significant decrease in the snow, seasonal snow cover has taken place. But subsequently, for a decade between 2000 and 2010, has a stabilized uh, the decrease. That does not mean the snow cover has significantly increased, but the rate of decrease is significantly reduced. And some of these observations uh, really can be seen uh, clearly on the snowfall data, which is, uh, which is available into the western Himalayas. So the seasonal snow cover is also significantly changing. That we are talking about the overall seasonal snow cover, but there are many basins into the Himalaya where the changes are very dramatic. 
because some of them are located in very low altitude, like for example, Nari Basin, on which the major hydropower establishments are there, you can see that seasonal snow cover is maintained in the middle of winter itself. And this reduction in snow cover is not small, it is from almost 90% to 50%, almost 40% of basin is naked in the middle of winter itself. And, um, and, it, uh, and however, in other parts, which are located like this Bhaga basin, located altitude above 4000 meters, you can see that significant melting is taking place in early part of winter. Uh, early part of winter. So if there is a significant melting is taken place into the, uh, into the early part of winter, then we can see there is also a significant change in the stream runoff is taking place. That means now we are having improved stream runoff in winter and we will subsequently reduce snow, uh, snow meter loss. So all this, uh, all this observation fits together a general pattern and therefore we uh, I have also tried to understand how um, how Himalayan basins will respond, but it is also important to understand uh, the response to the low altitude basin, basins where the major hydropower development is taking place, as well as where there are large number of people are living uh, as a small community. So how those communities is likely to be affected in future? So in order to do that, we have undertaken a study to understand how a stream runoff will change, and you can see this is. Uh, uh, in the Himalaya, which is, if any one of you visited, is the Manali, which is just north of uh, Nidali, and we have tried to develop this, uh, we have developed this model to understand how it is going to change, and then this is uh, the error, and this is uh, estimated, how accurate we can estimate it, and the model is reasonably. And one of the simple models, concept we have applied is how glaciers or sea snow cover is going to change if there is one degree rise in temperature. Basically, uh, if we really apply two degree or three degree Celsius temperature, the substantial changes will take place. So we just understand if there is a one degree rise in temperature, how it will take place. And you can see in terms of glacier, how mass balance is going to change. This is the present distribution of a glacier, uh, and you can see entire in this basin, most of the glaciers are located below 5600 meters. That means we are now in great threshold value. That means our snow line is an extreme threshold value. Any minor changes in snow cover can significantly affect its runoff. So, and this uh, line represents the present accumulation area of this glacier. And you can see present accumulation area, uh, and if there is a 2 degree rise in the temperature, then the new accumulation area will be, uh, will be like this, and AR will change, which is at 0.37 after then, uh, to 0.17. That means almost more than uh, 1 meter, more than one, uh, around 1.2 uh, meters will be lost in a in a uh, glaciated area, it takes place, and if it takes place, then our model suggests that there is a substantial reduction in snow and uh, snow and glacier mantle runoff will take place, and maximum uh, loss will come in monsoon time, essentially because if you really look into those glaciers, they are located in low altitude, and there is a lot of rain during monsoon time which is taking place on the glacier, and because of that, we have large runoff which is coming in monsoon. And subsequently, the, all seasons, autumn, winter, summer, and monsoon, will have substantial reduction in stream runoff. And these are the places where not only hydropower stations are being built, but these are the places where large human settlement is taking place. There are small, small communities living there. So those people are significantly, uh, they will be the first one which will be affected because of the climate change. So if you, if I can summarize uh, everything, I can say that there are uh, around 18, around 2,000 glaciers we have in 11 basins uh, we have analyzed and it clearly suggests that um, that uh, there is a significant retreat <coughs> is taking place and not only that, uh, that uh, numerous basic glaciers in Baspa and Tristabasin suggest the acceleration of rate of retreat. That means rate of retreat has significantly accelerated in a present decade. 
And uh, uh, in addition to that, the, the size of glacier has significantly reduced. Glaciers are now fragmenting, and mean glacier area is also significantly reduced into the Himalayas. Uh, and the field and uh, remote sensing based observation suggests that we have lost almost 90 meters of glacier ice. Glacier ice from 1976, and this is very substantial because some of the estimates based upon the area depth scaling suggest that we have approximately 100 to 110 meter glacier ice. Uh, and out of that 19 meter, one fifth has already uh, already gone. The snow line has significantly shifted as upward from 4,900 to 5,300 meter, uh, uh, and the large scale. Rip uh, venting and retreat of seasonal snow has observed and there are significant changes in the stream runoff pattern into the Himalaya is also taking place. So all these issues suggest that Himalayan glaciers are significantly uh, changing, stream runoff pattern is significantly changing and that is going to affect uh, the uh, communities which are living there and there are new challenges which we need to address.